In the forest of Perdita, silence surrounds our adventurers, save for the bubbling gripe of Briston Copperbrow's stomach. If I don't get a bowl of meat soon, I'm gonna collapse under this armor. Hunched over a pile of nuts and fruits, Bobberk Vittelgazer looks up. How about a bowl of fruit then? Hey everybody, it's Bob here, de facto DM amongst friends and self-taught cook, doing another recipe from Hero's Feast, the official D&D cookbook. This week we're gonna be doing Quith Pa, or Elven Iron Rations. Quith Pa is a vegan-friendly, whatever you have sort of dish that works well with regional and seasonal fruits. Now, later on, we're gonna talk about how you can make your own based on what you have. But to start, we're going to go with what you need for the apricot and orange Quith Pa called out in Hero's Feast. Six ounces of dried apricots diced up, three quarters a cup of shredded, unsweetened toasted coconuts, one and a half tablespoons of orange juice, one and a half teaspoons of orange zest, and three quarters a teaspoon of vanilla extract, as well as some salt to taste. Toasting your own coconut is easy. First thing you wanna do is get a pan onto medium heat and drop your coconut in there. Let it cook for about seven to 10 minutes until the coconut turns light to medium brown. Now, the bigger the pan you have, the better because you want most of the coconut touching the pan directly as opposed to piling on top of each other because then you're gonna get a more even toasting. Now you will wanna keep an eye on this because it can flip from white to brown like that once it starts toasting. Ding. After about 10 minutes and once your shredded coconut has turned mostly brown, you don't need total uniformity. I personally like a little bit of coloration difference in my shredded coconut. But once it is ready, go ahead and let it cool on a plate for a few minutes. Now combine all of our ingredients into a food processor. The apricots, orange juice, orange zest, vanilla extract. I wanna get every last drop of this. Vanilla extract is expensive. One quarter cup of our toasted coconut and a pinch of salt. Gordon Ramsay pinch. Once it's all in the food processor and the lid's on tight, go ahead and pulse until you see everything become homogenous and there's no large chunks. Now, can you use a blender instead of a food processor to do this? Not really. If you have a very powerful blender like a Vitamix or a Ninja, you might be able to do it by constantly pushing the food back down from the sides, but a blender by design is best suited to blend liquids and solids. A food processor is meant to act like you, cutting things very, very quickly. Now that it's well mixed, turn the power off, take the lid off, and pull it out into a bowl. Take a tablespoon and get yourself about a tablespoon size of your mixture, and then put it in your hand, scoop it out, roll it into a ball in your palm, Oh, it feels weird. Once you roll the ball in your palm, then just roll it down on top of the coconut, being very careful not to press in too hard because you want it to keep its ball shape. You just want to get some of that toasted coconut coating on it. Boom. Now take your ball, set it aside, finish up the rest of these. You'll probably be able to make about 15 to 16, though, Mine tend to be a little bit on the large size, so I usually only get about 12 to 13 out of this. And then let them sit for 45 minutes to dry out. What I love the most about this recipe is that once you get the core concept of it, all the parts are interchangeable. So let's look at this recipe. One, you have a primary binding ingredient. For this, that's the apricots. Second, you have the powerhouse flavor. That's going to be the zest of the oranges, which is going to scream in your mouth. That's a disturbing image. Ugh. Third, you have the liquid that is going to help soften everything, and then as it dries out, firm it up. That's the orange juice. You have a secondary note, a subtle flavor that is going to come through and kind of connect all of the dots. That here is the vanilla extract. And finally, you have the coating which is going to add a bit of texture, as well as either enhance or mute some of the flavors inside. That's the toasted coconut. So with that, you can make any number of balls based on the fruits and nuts and other ingredients you have that might be local, seasonal, or just whatever you wanna play around with. For example, I tried three different options here. 
one using dates, lemons, and pistachios, another one using pineapple, grapefruit, and hazelnuts, and one that gives you a blast of energy using dates, oranges, coffee, chocolate, and peanut butter. If you'd like to see the exact recipe for these, they're linked down below in the Toma description! The Tom, yeah, that thing. And there you have it, Quip Pa. These things are flavor bombs that will tide over even the hungriest warrior. Honestly, these things are fun to make, quick, easy, and you get to play around with all these different flavors. Dropping a plate of these in front of your players will tie them over for those really long battles. And they're vegan friendly, which is great because I've been trying to look for more recipes to make my gaming tables a little bit more inclusive. So whether or not it's at the gaming table or the kitchen table, we will catch you next time for the next cooking adventure.